Ugh. Every time I put my headphones in a bag or in my pocket, they get tangled up. It's infuriating and it reminded me this week of a subject that I wanted to talk about, which was muscle knots. So this idea that when somebody is massaging that they, they can somehow break a muscle knot down. So we need to start off with two things. Firstly, the idea of the muscle knot itself, um, what it is and what we mean by it. Muscles are linear structures and they, they have thick filaments and thin filaments and those are, are known as um, actin and myosin, the actin are thin ones and myosin are thicker ones and they sort of slide along each other um, once they get a signal to do so. All right, dog. Um, there's some proteins and calcium involved as well, but we won't go into it because it gets a bit complicated. So muscles are held in place by this incredible network of connective tissues that run in and through and around the muscle. And um, this is mainly composed of collagen. You'll hear it called fascia, but there's lots of different names for it. The point about muscle is that it's either shortening or lengthening depending on what it's doing. So concentric, eccentric um, movement and all that. It's always worth remembering, though, uh, that a muscle only ever pulls, not pushes, even when it's pushing or you're pushing. The fibers of the muscle are, are really small and there's thousands of muscle fibers that, uh, that build up to create this network of proteinous type structures that, um, you know, if you look at a piece of meat, you can see clearly the sort of fibrous aspect of it. The thing is, is that there's very little room for any of these fibers to change direction. They contract, you know, they travel along the line of their contraction. And if they were going to not, then they'd have to change direction somehow and get themselves folded around in much the same way that my headphones get knotted when they're in my pocket. Simply put, you can't have a muscle knotting. It doesn't happen. If it did, then the muscle would probably die um, as the blood supply to the area and the muscle itself would just be strangled. But we do understand that as we rub and press things into and around the body, we can feel lumps and bumps and some tenderness. And we know that if we sort of rub on them or break them down, we do feel a bit easier and sometimes there's less pain and so on and so forth. So, you know, what is it that is happening here and what are we feeling and what are we working on? Well, the answer might shock you a bit and I'm pretty sure that it's not muscle underneath our skin. Um, and so before we get anywhere near any muscle, we have to go through a layer that encases us all and wraps itself all the way around our body. This layer can get thicker or thinner depending on how many biscuits or donuts we put into it or how much exercise we do. Yes, folks, you guessed it, it's called fat. Now, fat doesn't just sit around in the body, you know, like great big lob globules like a packet of butter on a plate. All right, now let's use the butter as an analogy. So if you go to the shop and you buy a pack of butter, it comes wrapped in something, you know, wrapped around the butter itself. You don't generally anymore these days just go and buy a lump of butter. So if you were to buy a box of the packets of butter, then the individual bits of butter would be wrapped in the packets and those packets would be in a box. Um, and if you were a supermarket or a big hotel or restaurant or something, and you were bringing in I don't know, 250 or 300 boxes of butter, you would have, then have the butter wrapped in the packets, uh, which would be then in the boxes with the boxes on pallets and, and probably wrapped in plastic and so on and so forth. You get where I'm getting with this. So there's lots of individual components they're all wrapped individually. So fat is just like the butter. It has to be held in place in order for it to be controlled and for it to do what it needs to do. The cells that contain the fat are called adipocytes. And interestingly enough, the number of fat cells that we have as adults is pretty stable. We don't get more fat cells, uh, the fatter we get, the, the cells just get bigger. And this is really important for us as humans and part of our, our success story. And um, you know, you've got to remember that making cells is a time consuming and expensive business energetically speaking. Um, and if we're going to take on energy in the form of fat, we need to be able to get it in and store it quickly. You know, this is vital. Making fat cells adaptable and expandable is a really good idea because it allows a, a ready source of energy to be taken on really quickly, but it still has to be stored and kept in place like the butter. Wrapped around the fat cells is a network of fibers and they hold this fat cells firmly in place. And these fibers run all the way down from the skin um, around the fat cells and then become the fibers that we will eventually refer to as the deep fascia, exactly the same thing. Now fascia has lots of 
characteristics in the fascia that we think of as just being the tissues that wrap around the muscles, you know, the white stuff that everybody keeps banging on about. It's just one type of a rather dull connective tissue. The fibers that hold the fat cells in place, like I said, are exactly the same. They're a collagen, um, and whether it's deep fascia or, or superficial fascia, the fibers are identical. Now, of course, um, we have things that separate out different structures, um, and in some places we have thicker bits of certain areas and thinner bits of certain areas. And this fatty layer that we, we talk about is referred to as superficial fascia, um, by me anyway, but it's got lots of different names, um, the panicular layer, uh, the subcutis, the hypodermis, and so on and so forth. But essentially, it's still a fatty layer that's contained um, by a fibrous network and held in place. As I said, it can get bigger or smaller um, and it can do that very quickly. But the fibrous network is always there no matter how skinny you get. So when we work on somebody with body work, you know, whatever it might be, we're principally working the skin and this fibrous fatty layer. Now, because it's fibrous, it has the same capacity to become restricted or tight or lumpy or be subjected to injury and scarring as any other fibrous layer. And it's this area that you're going to experience um, the things that we're talking about as far as you know, lumps and rubbing is concerned. When we first bring people into a dissection room and they, they see the, the muscular layer and the fascia wrapped around it that's been sort of dissected away, they're, they're really surprised and they're putting your hands on that stuff. There's nothing that's familiar in that area. It's, it's an alien landscape to, to a therapist's hands. It's just something we don't touch. However, put your hands on, the therapist's hands on some fatty tissues covered in skin and boom, you know, it's a dawning realization <laughs> of what somebody's been doing for all these years isn't rubbing muscle, but rubbing something that's a bit closer to home. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we're taking away any therapeutic benefit of massage or physical touch, just that as I keep saying all the time, um, we're not doing the thing that we think we're doing, but instead we're telling a story about it. But it does beg the repeated question for me, which is whether we need to press as hard as we do, but that's another subject. In any event, this area of the body is uh, got a lot of stuff going through it, a lot of fluid needs a lot of fluid moving through it. It needs to be kept moving. Um, it's an endocrine organ in making and responding to hormones, and it covers an area that's sort of greater than the skin, which would controversially make it the biggest organ of the body. Don't tell anyone I told you. It's also hugely sensory, and it's the area that we experience ourselves and, and other people's bodies through moment by moment. It's how we react with the world. So it therefore, to me, makes a lot of sense to be focused on this as a therapeutic interface uh, rather than muscles, really. So there you go. So no muscle knots, just fatty lumps. Not really as cool sounding, but there we go. So that's my take on muscle knots. What do you think? Let me know. What do you think you're feeling? Put some comments down there in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe, share, do all the things we're supposed to do on social media. And don't forget to head over to the website for lots of dissection videos, webinars, and some very cool information. And I will see you next time.